right, Algebra 1, Lesson 56. This one is on finite and infinite sets, membership in a set, and rearranging before growth. Okay, this is not too hard, um, but I just need you to pay attention to something. Okay, so um, the word finite and inf infinite, um, finite is something that has limits. We are finite creatures. God is infinite. He is without bounds, limitless. So those are kind of, okay, so when they talk about, so they're going to put a set of numbers within um, this little brackets, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, okay? Now, um, they call these, we say that this set has a finite number of members, members. so um, it is included in what we have. So these are all limited to this. Um, but if we show this on a set, one, two, three, four, and then you see dot, 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 that means it keeps going on forever. This would be infinite, okay? They're just trying to show you that, so it's really not. So this is called a set, an infinite set. The other set was a finite set, okay? Um, now, they're going to start doing something like this, where you have like five zeros, three ones, four twos, it doesn't matter, I'm just coming up with whatever. And then they ask you to state that set. So um, this is the members of set B, so we would write B equals, and then we would draw this little thing like that, and then you just tell me which numbers are included in this set, one, zero, one, and two. And that's just showing what's in the set. You see that? Okay, if that you don't have to write five zeros, yeah. three ones, and two four, two, two, four twos, you just have to write what was in the set, okay? Um, now, let's look at this one. Let's write something that represents K. Um, here are some numbers, zero, one, zero, two, one, zero, five, seven, four, five, seven, okay? Now, these are the members of K, and so if you were to write this set, this is what you would do. Now, to help me, I write them in order. You don't have to. Mm -hmm. You just have to tell me what is in this set for K. So I'm going to go 0 is in this set, 1 is in this set, 2 is in this set, no 3s. There's a 4, there's a 5, and there's a 7. And I like to do it in order because you count in order. And you can cross out in order. So this is the set for K. Mm -hmm. It's basically what you're saying. Yeah. It doesn't have to be in any order. It's just showing what's in K. It's not really hard at all. Okay. okay. Let's look at the set L. Um, 7, 15, 0, 1, 15, 0, 8, negative 13, and 42. Okay. This is set L. So how you would state that is L equals, and then you'll draw this little thing. Um, and I'm going to start with negative numbers. Negative 13, 0, 1, 2, 7, 8, 8, 15, 15 42. and 42. Yeah, so that's your set L. Okay, again, they don't have to be in any order. It just makes it easier to set it up like that. Okay? Now, the next thing I want you to see is this little symbol. It looks kind of like an E. It's like almost like a fork, okay, or an E. And then you have this symbol with a line through it. It literally means nothing more than yes, it do, is, the number is in that, or no, the number is not in it. Do you see that? Yeah. Okay, so for example, uh, let's, let me show you this. Here's set A. Set A is 0, 1, 3, and 5. Uh, set B is 0, 4, 6, and 7. And set C, I'm going to have to put up here and run out of room. Set C is 1, 2, 3, 5, 7. Now, that's the sets, and here's what they want to know, if it's true or false. A, um, problem, 
is it says five, and then it's got this little e is a. So that's basically saying five is in a. Is five in a? Here's a. Yes. A includes five, so this is true. Okay. Yeah. Now let's do B. I'm sorry, I'm running out of room. So uh, B is four, and then it's got that E symbol. Four is in C. Well, let's look at C. C includes one, two, three, five, and seven. So this is false. We would put false. Okay. Pretty simple. And then the last one it says C problem says five is not a part of B. Is that true or false? Well, let's look at B. Is five a part of B? No. So five is not a part of B. So that's true. Okay? That's pretty much how it works, and that's how you do it. Okay? Mm -hmm. Pretty simple. Okay? That's lesson 56. Oh, wait. Sorry. They did a new part of the lesson. Did you ever stop it? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, next part of the lesson is this. <laughs> Rearranging before graphing, something totally opposite of members and infinite and finite. Um, so, here we go. They are wanting us to graph 3x plus 2y equals 4. Now, um, something I would encourage you with is we're going to answer for y. So, we're going to pretend like we're trying to get 2y by itself. So, don't, don't worry about your x and all that right now, but just try to get the y by itself. So right now we want to put the 2y by itself. We'll start with the, um, we'll do the 2 later. So this plus 3x, we're going to move across the equals. And remember when you move it, it becomes minus 3x. Okay, so then this becomes 2y equals 4 plus a negative 3x or just minus 3x, however you want to do it. Okay, now this 2 says 2 times y. So since it's times y times 2, we're going to divide by 2. So when you divide by 2, you have to divide by 2 on both of them. So that's 2 and that one's 2. Okay? You see why we do that? Mm -hmm. Because it's not just the 4. It has to be the 4 and the negative 3x. So 4 divided by 2 is 2. Um, so we're done with that part. Plus, and then you would just make this negative 3 over 2x. Okay, so that's what y equals. Yeah. Okay, so now that you have that, which is what the book has exactly, all right, <clears throat> the next thing you want to do is you're going to choose anything for x. So remember we did these kind of problems the other day. Um, the book actually chose 0, 2, and negative 2, which is fine. And you're going to put those inside your x to figure out what y is. Mm -hmm. They don't have to ha actually have to be 0, 2, and negative 2. It can be whatever you want it to be. Okay, so here we go. Um, if I were to put a zero here, negative three halves times zero, anything times zero is going to give me the answer zero. So this is, um, actually let me move this stuff out of the way and we'll perform it above. Okay, so this negative three x times zero would just be zero. And so then y would equal two plus zero, which is two. We'll just leave it. All right, now let's do the next one. Well, x is two. So you would put times 2 right here, which is really 2 over 1. Remember that? Mm -hmm. So then now you're multiplying, and we can cross or cancel out, rather. So this would be negative 3 times 1, which would be negative 3, and 1 times 1, which is 1. So it's just negative 3. Plus, and then I just move my 2 up. So y equals negative 1 for my answer. <clears throat> okay? And then let's do negative 2. So times negative 2. And I'm going to put that negative 2 over 1. So this is multiplied. Okay? Um, so what will go into both of these 2 will? 2 will go into 2 one time. 2 will go into negative 2, negative 1 time. Make sure you're paying attention to that. See how this was a negative 2? Yeah. And when you cancel, you still have to keep the negative. Okay? So we cross out 2 and 2 and make 1 and 1, and you have to keep a negative. Okay, and then negative 3 times negative 1 makes a positive 3. And then 1 times 1 is 1, which 3 over 1 is 3, plus 2, y equals 5. Mm -hmm. Got it? Now, we're going to graph it. I'm 
I'm not going to put the numbers up there, so hopefully you've learned by now. This is the y, this is the x. So x0 up 2, x2 down 1, x2 to the left, up 5. Okay, then you would just draw your Okay, that is graphing, rearranging for graphing. Now, I'm not going to graph this next one, we're just going to rearrange it. So, look at this one, y minus x equals 0. Again, you want to answer for y, so this minus x comes over here, it becomes plus x. So, y equals 0 plus x, mm -hmm. which is x. Yeah. So, basically, whatever number you choose for x, you choose for y. Yeah. Whatever number you choose for um the next x, so if you choose 2, y is going to be 2. If you choose 1, y is going to be 1. You choose negative 2, y is going to be negative 2. Yeah. And then you graph that. Mm -hmm. Okay? All right, that's lesson 36.